Hi gang! Today we're going to look at one of my favourite topics. We're going to look at uh, smart materials and modern materials. We're going to learn a few of the best known of each. There are actually dozens, hundreds probably, um, but I've picked uh, just a few of my favourites to share with you. And we're going to understand how they can be incorporated into new and existing products. So, first of all, which is which? This often confuses people. Um, so modern materials are classified as ones that have been developed through new and improved processes. Typically, this is within the last 100 years or so, um, but often more recently in the last 20, 30 years. So the ones we're going to look at today are titanium, LCDs, gra uh, graphene and carbon nanotubes and ferrofluid. So smart materials in comparison are also modern materials, but they change their properties in response to an external stimulus. So for instance, they change with light or heat or moisture, pH or force. So all smart materials are modern materials, but not all modern materials are smart materials. Uh, smart materials allow for the design of new exciting products. They increase functionality of existing products. And the ones we're going to look at are thermochromic pigments, photochromic pigments, shape memory alloys and polymorph. So let's get into it. We're going to look at modern materials first of all. So our first one is titanium. This is a metal with an amazing high strength to weight ratio and it's resistant to corrosion. It's used in a variety of new uh, fields including medicine. So they are used as replacement hip joints. Uh, they are biomechanically um, non-reactive so that means they don't uh, interfere with any processes in the body and often they can even be uh, they can have um, be made of metal foam as well to reduce the weight. Titanium is also used for sports uh, for things like high performance uh, bicycle frames and they have applications in aeronautical fields as well such as parts of planes like uh, the turbine blade and also in the hulls of ships. So I have collated a, a huge number of videos to help you with these. The first is about LCDs and uh, I'd only like you to watch the first three minutes of this one and then we'll summarise it. Let's go! So what have we learned? Well, LCDs stands for liquid crystal displays. They started in simple uh, objects like calculators, old mobile phones that I remember when I was young, uh, and digital readouts. Now they are everywhere and the technology is developing year on year. So they're used in laptop computers, most t uh, new TVs, and how they operate is that the pixels, each individual unit, the reason I've included this picture is you can see each individual unit here, the pixels are switched on or off using uh, using the liquid crystals to rotate that light. So if you remember from the video where he's holding up the filter, you can see it, you can have the grade it. Um, so it's either on, dimmed or off entirely. Amazing. Our last two modern materials are classified as nano materials. And by that we mean beyond the microscopic level at the nanoparticle level. So at the molecular level. The first video for you is all about graphene, amazing material which we have not utilised uh, enough of yet. So watch this video and then we'll go to the notes in a minute. Okay, so we've learned about graphene, but we're also classifying carbon nanotubes in this as well. So both of these are allotropes of carbon. Uh, with amazing properties and product potential. By an allotrope, of course, we mean in this case on the picture on the right you can see we have graphite and diamond which is uh, one of the softest and one of the hardest materials known to man but those are naturally occurring and uh, carbon nanotubes and graphene are uh, man-made but they are different allo allotropes of carbon. So nanotubes and graphene have exceptionally high strength to weight ratios. 
They say that uh, if you had a sheet of graphene, you could suspend an elephant on the tip of a pencil. They are also excellent conductors of heat and electricity, which means they have huge applications for things like tennis rackets, flexible and wearable electronics, aerospace and vehicles as well. Um, another uh, bike, um, bike frame there for you. And a video on our last modern material, which is one of my favourites on ferrofluid. Watch this and we'll go through the notes. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I did. So let's go through. So ferrofluid consists of magnetic iron particles suspended in either an oil or a water-based liquid. The beauty of ferrofluid, of course, is that it only requires the use of passive magnets to move it around. So you don't need to use energy. You don't need to use fuel. It has so much potential and it's uh, currently used in computers, in skateboard wheels, in speakers, and as the video uh, discussed, it has the potential for biomedical applications in cancer treatment. Amazing stuff. Okay, and then let's get to smart materials. These are the ones that change with their environment. To start you off, I found this short, fun little video from this company that produce uh, both thermochromic and photochromic pigments. So give it a watch. That was fun, right? So what have we learned? Well, photochromic pigments, that means the combination of light and colour, photo, light, chromic, colour. So photochromic materials change colour when exposed to UV light, specifically UV light. So they are used currently in colour changing or um, uh, tonal changing um, glasses. So in these lenses, which you or your friends may actually have access to, or may even have a pair of, uh, and they are also using things like uh, these bands, which can be given to children so that their parents know if they are um, exposed to too much UV uh, damage and they need to reapply their sunscreen. In comparison, we have thermochromic materials. So that's the thermo meaning heat and chromic again meaning colour. So thermochromic materials change colour when exposed to temperature, so either hot or cold. And uh, most often they react to uh, change in warmth, so they're used for things like these colour changing spoons uh, to check the temperature of baby food so that obviously you're not going to burn a baby's mouth. But um, pretty much all of us have had one of these head thermometers being put across our forehead before and it means that we don't need to uh, put a thermometer in, in baby's mouth. So they have functional uses but they also just have novelty uses as well like mood rings or this urinal <laughs> in, this, in this toilet to uh, make sure that the gentlemen um, have good aim. <laughs> And if you'd like to see some of the novelty use even further, you can watch this fun video from one of my favourite uh, pairs of makers from Evelyn Caitlin. That's very entertaining. This video is on our next uh, modern material shape memory alloys. Though This is an application from NASA. Amazing video. Give it a watch and we'll go through the notes in a second. Fantastic. I love that. So what have we learned? Well, Shape memory alloys. Uh, most materials, when they're bent out of shape, obviously remain that way. But shape memory alloys return to their original shape, specifically when they are heated back up again. So common uses currently are for spectacle frames. If you were to sit down on your frames or damage them in your bag, you can just heat them back up again um, with a bit of boiling water, I believe, and they will return to shape. They're also used in nitinol braces. So nitinol is the uh, commercial name for shape memory alloy. You need to know this because it can be used interchangeably. So braces, a lot of you may have had these before as well. Those, the metal parts um, and the wires, uh, when they are heated from the warmth of your body, will uh, cause your teeth to realign because they've already set in that shape. And they're used in artery stents. So the large uh, arteries in your uh, in your body uh, that come away from the heart can be damaged with plaques. So you can see them here. 
and so they create these shape memory alloy stents you can see how big they are compared to a fingertip they start very very small and go into the tube uh, go into the artery then the warmth of the body means that they automatically expand and by doing so they put pressure on the plaque and then they can allow uh, for easier blood flow amazing use and our last smart material is polymorph and we have some of this at school and uh, I will show you and uh, give you a little bit of a demonstration so this is a really fun video let's go through some notes so in summary polymorph is a thermoplastic but it specifically can be reused over and over and over it has a lot of uses uh, particularly for improving the ergonomics of a product's design and as a prototyping material uh, for use in school it is quite expensive though so let's go through our recap for today uh, well we, um, there have been amazing developments in new materials with benefits and a lot of future potential modern materials have been designed fairly recently and we looked at titanium liquid crystal displays graphene carbon nanotubes and ferrofluid smart materials are also modern materials but they react to stimuli and we looked at thermochromic pigments photochromic pigments shape memory alloys and polymorph i hope you enjoyed that one for today catch you next time bye